Hey guys, I've got a bit of a rat problem at my new house. They're raccoons. Whatever. Anyway, they're you massive. Can't smash the ra they're tearing up the garage, they're tearing up the garbage every night, but I have a solution. I don't think I'll have any more rats after this. It's a giant mouse trap. First of all, don't worry guys, we're not gonna be smashing any raccoons today, but we do have a ton of other stuff lined up to smash. Uh, while I'm waiting for the sun to come out, let me show you how I built it. I built the base out of two by fours and three quarter inch plywood. And these springs are old coils from a car suspension system. And this bar is just welded from one inch square steel tubing. Now, instead of the traditional way to set a mousetrap where you have to pull the steel bar back, that would have been way too difficult with these huge springs. When these springs are fully tightened, you really have to fight that bar back. And trust me, you do not want to end up underneath it. A little help, Sandra. So instead of having to fight the bar by hand, I chose to install a winch to tighten the spring. All I have to do is bring down the bar, lock it into place, and then use the winch to pull in some of the rope which tightens the springs. Then all I gotta do is pull the pin and we should be in business. All right, guys, time for our first test. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Huh, doesn't want to go, okay. Three, two, one. One. All right, first test was a success, but all I can do is hope that raccoons don't like watermelons. Anyway, that bar came down super fast, but just how fast was it moving? If the bar is one meter long, that means it has a 3.14 meter journey on its way to the watermelon. And counting 10 frames for the second half of its journey, we can figure out that it was moving at about 42 miles an hour on impact. Okay, watermelon might have been a little bit too easy. Let's try something a little bit harder. How about some coconuts? All right, giant mousetrap versus coconuts. Three, two, one, go. It took a lot of revisions to get this mousetrap working perfectly because every time I wound it up, something would break. So I would have to fix that and then I'd find the next weakest link and so on and so on. A lot of welding later, it works great. The next thing we're gonna destroy is this model volcano I made. I used about 50 pounds of clay and it took me about three hours to put all the little decorations on there, and it's gonna be gone in one-tenth of a second. Hopefully we get some cool slow motion from this thing getting cut in half. And just to make sure we get some cool footage, I'm gonna pour some diethyl ether in the top of the volcano. You can't have a good volcano without fire. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Ho, ho, ho. I'd say that worked. I created this bit for a cameo in Mark Rober's newest video. It's pretty cool. He put a GoPro on a Hot Wheels car and sent it around a pretty cool track. You can check it out. I'll put the link in the description. By now, you've probably realized that this thing is pretty serious. It does not mess around. So I'm sure also a lot of you are wondering what would happen if your arm got stuck in there or something like that. Well, I'm not gonna try it, but I think I'll volunteer this guy to try it out for us. Always wear your safety goggles, kids. Two, one. Well, you know what? This guy doesn't even... Maybe he'd do better if he had a hard hat on. I think he's okay. The helmet looks like it's a lot more snug. I haven't seen the high speed yet, but something tells me this guy didn't make it either. Two, one. Ha, and my girlfriend calls me a hoarder. She says, what do you need a hard hat for? You'll never use a hard hat, but look at this. Oh yeah. That was pretty sweet with this styrofoam head. I couldn't believe how much it compressed down onto that. I mean, I can't, like, I think it's time to retire. He's had a tough day. Let's move on to the Ublik balloon. So we're gonna see if this can stop it or if it's still gonna go right through this. No! I'm retarded. Oh. <laughs> Take two in three, two, one. It's loud. So Ublik is a non-Newtonian mixture. No, I'm just kidding. You guys already know that. But what you don't know is what I'm planning for this mousetrap. See, after this video, I'm going to try to make it into a giant mousetrap car. The mousetrap's gotten pretty dirty, so we're going to wash it off with all these colas. Oh, gosh. This one's in there. Good. Okay, remind me next time to get diet sodas, because this just made everything about 10 times stickier and messier. Well... That thing is awesome, and I wanna keep smashing stuff, but I've already smashed everything that's smashable. Except for that raccoon, which I'm not allowed to smash, but I think I have a way to solve our raccoon problem. 
Okay, Sandra said I'm not allowed to smash the raccoons in the mousetrap, but she never said anything about hooking them across the yard using a catapult. So for all you Yankees that don't know, down here in Florida, raccoon hucking is a national pastime. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh oh. I don't know about this. No, trust me, it's cool. See, we put cat food in the basket, and then we have a motion sensor that trips an alarm when the raccoons crawl in there. Then all we, then all we have to do is pull the cord and the raccoon goes flying across the yard. Have you even tested this? Uh, so how much does a raccoon weigh? About the size of a small watermelon? Roughly. Three, two, one. Back to the drawing board. All right, guys, that's it for this video, and I really hope you enjoyed it. Oh, looks like I got something here. Gotta go.